Welcome back to another episode of Heaven and Healing Podcast. I'm Angela. If you're watching this in real time, the following episode has been recorded as a part of my YouTube maternity leave, which when I return from, I will be live streaming every Wednesday night right here on the channel at 8 p.m. Central Time. So be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up and enjoy the episode. I'll see you all again real soon. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I have my friend JT back on the show. If you have not already seen our episode together, we recorded way back in, I think, uh, November or December of 2023. Um, it was all about exposing Disney. And so today we are kind of um, springboarding off of that episode to talk all about Marvel now because Disney obviously bought Marvel. Um, and so kind of our prayer with this conversation is that if you are a Christian, you would see that, you know, if you're into the Marvel movies, into the Marvel comics, and maybe you're raising your little boys to be in on this stuff, and you think the superhero thing is all innocent, that this would just be really um, edifying for you, convicting for you to just understand what all of this stuff really is at its core, so that, you know, you can kind of honestly do away with it. Um, and train your child up in the way they should go. And if you are watching this because maybe you're just looking up Marvel stuff in general because you're a fan and you don't know Jesus Christ, well, I pray that you would stick around and watch this so that you can see that the, you know, the creators, the storylines, the themes in these movies, in these comics, all ultimately really glorifies the devil. And so you have to kind of ask yourself if everything in this world is all about glorifying the devil, then that lends to the existence of God, does it not? Especially when the storylines all are antithetical to not only God, but specifically the God of the Holy Bible, the theistic Christian God. And so I just pray that you would watch this with an open mind and yeah, that maybe a seed of faith can be planted for you with this discussion. So uh, that being said, I am going to bring on my friend JT. Here he is. Say hi. Well, hello. <laughs> Thanks for back. having me back on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, everyone loved our conversation about Disney, and they did ask for that part too because I've kind of teased it when we talked about it before. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're just going to kind of get right into it. And y'all, for the record. I am not a superhero girl. I never have been. I, I grew up thinking like all of the comic book stuff was honestly stupid and kind of lame. <laughs> and I did see like the Avengers movies and things like that. I was telling JT and, you know, when I watched them later in life, I thought like, oh, these are pretty good. But then I only watched them once, one and done. I've never been into it. I've always thought that it was kind of just dorky and, and the way that like guys particularly like grown men are just like completely sold out for these movies it's like a cult and it's kind of weird so that being said this is not my area of expertise but jt did grow up reading comics and all those things and he's just a plethora I was a, I, of information i was a nerd there you go <laughs> now a nerd for christ um yeah. so yeah i'm just gonna kind of let him lead the way with this discussion i have questions and I hope that because I'm kind of approaching this in layman's terms, that those of you that also are approaching this with layman's terms will be able to really get it. So let's start just kind of with where we left off with Disney. Um, why do you think that Disney wanted Marvel? Like, why did they purchase Marvel in the first place? Well, well you know, I want to go back to the nerdy thing real quick. Um, <laughs> what's interesting is that 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 is funny and actually maybe we should just talk about this for a second the fact that yeah so i i w read comic books when i was a kid like when i was a child and i i don't know what age i stopped you know i, I switched from comic books to baseball cards or something like that or you know you know got more into sports but i think part of it was that it was nerdy it was nerdy at a certain age that like you kind of had to grow out of that kind of thing and but in today's day like nerd culture is like is chic you know it's like is it funny like so like before you'd got picked on for this kind of stuff but now it's like it's embracing like being a nerd and is it perhaps that that got pushed out there so they could sell movies and 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 toys and and do all these things when 
Yeah, you would have got shamed back in the day. It's like, are you still reading that stuff? Like, what do you, what do you have? Like, yeah. what are you, 10? They you know, also like, like, you know, um... like, because because we grow up, because 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 we should grow up and we should grow out of these things. But <laughs> but but people don't anymore. It's also like a weird kind of niche with, um, you know, it's like if a, if a girl is like super into comic books or superheroes, then she's like, she's like well sought after with like this like particular group of boys you know it's like oh she's it's like a weird fetish or something yeah you're totally right it's it's become um it's become a trend to be into this stuff it's yeah yeah it's like yeah you would be mocked in before and yeah like we would naturally you know i would think about like in the bible when like paul was saying when i was a child i spoke as a child i thought as a child but when i was became a man i put away childish things mm. And so, like, it's okay to 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 get into some of these things as a as a child. Well, I mean, obviously, if you don't know better, and then one day you realize, well, you know, like, there's a real world out there, and I need to go. I know I need to go experience it. I need to go like put my focus on that and not, you know, Narnia, a galaxy far away, or any of this kind of stuff like that. I need to like focus on what's here in front of me, and also, obviously, as Christians what God has promised us. Mm, that goes with video games too. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it's all the same. And I mean, again, it's all the same thing where like before you, you're still playing Nintendo, like, like what else? Like, come on, man. But no, but now it's like, you know, these, the more, the, these things are obviously it's like kids stuff has, has been, it's like infantilized generation, as we were talking about with Disney that to the, to answer your question, why did, why did Disney buy this? For one, Disney buys everything. It's it is interesting. Like when Disney used to be like Mickey Mouse and princesses, and then like you go into like now if you went, it's like the Disney store. I remember like when I was taking my kids in there, it was like they had Indiana Jones, they had Star Wars, they had the Avengers, they had they got everything. So they really have the the market cornered on like kind of what was popular in the eighties, or obviously even before that and after that, but. To me, I think it is like we talked about that maybe a lot of women, a lot of have grew up like in the princess stuff, like in Disney. And so women specifically, mostly like the, the Disney stuff. But now the now they've got the guys, too, because the guys like Star Wars and they like comic books. Hmm. So like they wanted both. They wanted it all. And I think that obviously at this point, other than the fact that they're kind of trashing their brain lately, they do have it all. They got they got every, they got something for everybody. I love that you said that an infantilized generation. Like to that point, I, I haven't really thought of that before because I, I remember saying to you in the last episode, you think about these women that, you know, they're like in their forties and they have Mickey Mouse all over their house, or they 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 make it a point like, oh, we have to go to Disney three times a year, and it's it is that mindset. It's like infantilized adulthood. And mm -hmm. yeah, exactly that point. Now they have the women already, so now they have the men too, and they're just keeping, essentially, just keeping the masses like in a state of infancy. Because if, mm -hmm. if we're always in this state of imaginative infancy, then we can never actually grow, we can never develop, we can never learn. And obviously, you know, an infant, a child, they're under, they are submitted to something or someone. So it's like. Disney is the big the big wig of submission, right? That everyone in the culture is pledging allegiance to just through the consent of these things and like the obsession and the idolatry of all this stuff. That's really interesting. It's disturbing. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. yeah it is. I mean, well, I mean, again, it's like, you know, distracting us with idols. Again, we I, I brought up the last last time we were talking was was in John five when it says little children, keep yourself away from idols. And so like that's what they're doing. I mean, they're putting these idols out there. And I said, so I, I have, like I said, growing up with this stuff and obviously then watching the movies and then getting eyes to see, I did that movie ancient angels with my, with, with demon racers, Brian. And that's the first thing I said, I was like, in my, in, when we did, we cut the promo for it. I said, you know, the Nephilim were the hero, the men of renown, the heroes of old from Genesis six, you know, the sons of God, had sex with the daughters of men and they bore nef they bore children to them and they were the nephilim they were giants these these were the heroes of old the men of renown and i said so people think oh well after the flood they, they were gone and i was like no they're still there i said now they're on the big screen they're in your comic mm -hmm. books wow. like that is and so you don't even know it but these are now your kids idols wow 
you know, because they they're they're glorifying these things. And whether you believe they're real or you just think it's fantasy, it's like these th these stories, these mythologies have just changed form. And now it's, you know, like the, the Avengers and the X-Men instead of, you know, the pantheon of gods in mm. to the Greeks or the or the Egyptians. That's really good. And we're going to get deeper into that. So um, because I because I think it's such a it's a major component of all of it is to talk about like why it works like why why do these storylines and these themes have such a hold on people because it's beyond just like mere idolatry it's like enchantment mm -hmm. um and so we will get into that let's start with like kind of like marvel history what can you tell us about that well just as we said with with disney a lot of people would say oh disney's really bad now it didn't used to be like that. It just it became really bad. And that's what I said. You can go look into the, like, the roots of these things, like guys like Stan Lee and Jack Kirby writing like, you know, some of the, the biggest, you know, oldest comic books. They always had this kind of Gnostic roots to these these comic books. I, I, I bring up a good example of like in the comic books was the Fantastic Four. So they had a very famous comic series with the Silver Surfer, like the Silver Surfer is introduced into the Marvel series and the Silver Surfer is a herald of Galactus, which is, is they call him a, um, I believe that he's called a, uh, a, celest a celestial, you know, so basically he's a god, you know, he's like, he's like, he's a god, he's a planet eater. And so he sends out the Silver Surfer to seek out planets, I guess, that are nutritionally good for him or something like that, that he can eat and can consume and feed on. Okay, so he sends the Silver Surfer to Earth, and then... But the Silver Surfer, who he create, who created, who he created, by the way, he sends them there and then he starts to have compassion on the people of Earth. And so instead of doing what he was supposed to do, he warns the people from Earth and then he fights against his his creator in order to save the Earth people. And then the first person he interacts with is, is Sue Storm of the Fantastic Four. Like, again, so, so at the end of the comic books, they can't beat Galactus because he basically is a god. But but Galactus actually relents and does decides not to destroy Earth. But what he does is he banishes the Silver Surfer, takes mm -hmm. his ability to fly away from Earth from him, and he's and he's stuck there. And so okay, like so literally when when Jack Kirby and Stanley were talking about making this comic book, they said who should this who should the Fantastic Four fight next? They should fight God. So think about it. So so uh, if you guys are not familiar with Gnosticism, Gnostic, Gnosticism is a inverted hermeneutic where through knowledge you can gain salvation. Mm -hmm. Think think the serpent in the garden. So the serpent in the garden gives Eve and Adam knowledge from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and they'll be like gods. Mm -hmm. So in Gnosticism, they view the serpent as the good guy and the God of the Bible as the bad guy. So like... That's what this story is showing you. So you just think about like, just think about the the angel who fell, who got cast down to earth, and then he's basically stuck here at some point. That's the devil. So like the silver surfer is basically an angel who who warns people about the mean God, and then they fight against the mean God. And it's like, it's kind of crazy that like, that story is not actually very subtle the way it's told. Hmm. But I never knew it until I could until I knew what Gnosticism was and I knew what they what they were trying to tell us. But are you saying they literally said that that he should fight God? Oh yeah, there's a quote. Like there's they a quote literally said that. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a quote from Stanley. And, oh, and by the way, I think this I I could be wrong about this, but I believe the comic book's from 1963. So like this is this is old this is old Marvel. Okay. You know this is this is this is goes back to the beginning of it, and obviously, like I said, this is one of their biggest. The, this is probably one of the biggest uh, like series that the the Fantastic Four had as mm -hmm. far as like you know promoting their um you know as far as like yeah their their brand of the Silver Surfer. And is that um so you said 1960s so that's is that kind of like the um birthplace of Marvel like that era? I would, well the Marvel I'm I'm trying to think yeah well, I think early 60s is kind of like like was there like really branding like the big comics I think. I want to say that Spider-Man was also first appearance was in Fantastic Four as well. And he was, um, yeah, he was one of those characters from the early 60s as well. I think they had some, I, I want to say that, that the Fantastic 
Marvel started in the 40s, I believe, mm. maybe even the 30s. But like, I'm not sure when Stan Lee started to take over and was actually, you know, leading kind of the production of it. But that like whole Gnosticism theme has just perpetuated from basically then through today, right? Right. Well, I, th I would say that that's the thing is like the Gnosticism, what it really is, is like, it's not just comic books. The more you, you look into it, it's like it's the entertainment business as a whole. I mean, it's, it's the world as a whole, because, again, if like you believe what the Bible says about this Satan's the ruler of this world. Like, the, do, you, do you think that the world serves him because they think he's bad? Hmm. I mean, some of them know he's bad and they serve him anyways because he can give them the things they want. But I think that that's like the view they have on him where they would say, oh, the Christians and, you know, like the, the Jews and some of these other religions, they've got it wrong. The Bible is not quite right about him. That's why they say not, you know, so what Gnosticism comes from a Greek word, gnosis, knowledge. So you just think about even like the, the apostles were dealing with Gnostics where they, there's this secret knowledge. OK, so, you know, a little bit. The Bible is not quite wrong, but it's, it's there's this higher level of knowledge that you have to get, and then you'll know, nah, it's not like that. It's more like the yin and the yang. There's a little bit of evil and in, in the good, and there's a little bit of evil, you know, good in the evil. And so, like, that's, I think that's where this comes from, is, like, that the world does not see the devil as as the bad guy. Just, like, and obviously, it's, it's front and center in, like, the comic books. Yeah. Yeah, and even when I was in New Age, like, we didn't necessarily see the devil as a as a bad guy either. It's more like the belief of you know um the it, well gnosticism i mean really i think that's what the new age is is gnosticism if you had to put a definition on it because it's that idea that like oh there's some truth in the bible but you can kind of like take what works and leave what doesn't sort of thing mm -hmm. yeah and with the serpent in the garden particularly it's like he's not a bad guy it's just it's just true that we are all little G gods. Like that's just the truth of it. And so in a way, like Satan is like the liberator of yeah, absolutely. instead of God being the liberator. It's like, oh, you get your salvation through Lucifer and what he has to offer you. It's so twisted and disgusting. Um, but like back to that point of that's why I think it works though, because Satan is the ruler of this world and scripture says that people who don't have the spirit of God can't comprehend the things of the spirit. And so, you know, they, they see these kinds of things and it, and it registers as like some sort of truth. And so they get so into it, but it's because it's, there's a spiritual void. They're actually, they are actually looking for the God that they deny, but because they can't comprehend the things of God, they're searching for it through their sinful nature and finding mm -hmm. it in stuff like this. Um, Anyway, sure. with so so there's like a Gnostic programming throughout all of this that we're going to continue to talk about. I'm curious, like about specifics with like the storylines and the characters, like how you just got into the Silver Surfer thing. Um, so some of like the older ones, like X-Men, can you kind of talk about that? Well, I think the X-Men is like it comes from like this genetic component. I, and I would say that like the X-Men is 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 likely a a comic that kind of talks it i would say that the the, the x-men would be like nephilim would be like they have this different kind of blood type and they have superpowers and i think that that's like they're the here these are heroes and so obviously the x-men it's the wide range of like the, the characteristics of these heroes they're all different but again like then you go back into like the weirder stuff about like the nephilim story of like you know from the greeks and the egyptians and all the other you know mythologies around the world about these they're different they have they're not all the same, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that like, that's very clear. I mean, again, like these, these things are not like so explicit, but I mean, obviously there's certain ca characters just like called, just, they're just angels. You know, there's ones that live, live forever. There's ones that have like telekinesis. Some of them are witches, um, like literally like the Scarlet Witch. And I think that that, that kind of comes from this idea of, yeah, like that, there's these bloodlines or this kind of almost a secret community of people that have powers. You don't even know that they got powers, hmm. you know? Yeah. Like demi, like demigods basically. Got it. And so talk about the Scarlet Witch. Like we were just talking about before we started recording. Talk about. Well, her. yeah, this, so this is interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to go back up a little bit. Cause I was like okay. to go back to the roots of Marvel. Yeah. So, so uh, Wanda, the Scarlet Witch was, it was originally in the X-Men, but like, 
And the comic books, they go back to like this story of let's talk to, about Doctor Strange. So I was I I won't take all the credit for this because I learned this through uh, the Good Fight Ministries. They did a series called, I guess it's Marvel and DC's War Against God, I believe, or uh, something about that. But anyways, they they talk about how that before there was Doctor Strange, there was Doctor Droom. And Dr. Droom looks just like Aleister Crowley and his story is basically the same. And if you guys aren't familiar with Aleister Crowley, he's like the father of modern Satanism, the modern new age. He's the one who came up with the, the, the famous slogan, do what thou wilt. It's basically like the, the Satanist credo. And so like he is, he wrote a bunch of books, obviously wicked, wicked man. I mean, he's admittedly so. And so Stan Lee patterns this, this character after him to, he's a wizard. And then, so later his, that character morphs into a character called Dr. Druid. And then eventually he becomes Dr. Strange and like a new iteration of him. But he's like all the storyline is exactly the same. But again, like, so obviously you see Dr. Strange throwing up the devil horns. He's practicing black. He's doing black magic when he needs to. And, you know, obviously he's got very loose morals. So just put it that way. And, so then in the new movies, they have you have Wanda, the Scarlet Witch in the Doctor Strange movie. I mean, she's like literally a representation of like the Whore of Babylon, the lady in red in the Book of Revelation, the Scarlet Witch, you know, the Scarlet Woman, the Scarlet Whore of Babylon. And that's who she is. And and again, to go to the Crowley in the and I think the series Wanda and uh, Vision, she she practices chaos magic. They explicitly say there's they sell t-shirts that say like chaos magic on it for um for the Scarlet Witch. Mm. Like that comes from Aleister Crowley. I mean, so like this is like real Satanism, guys. Like in, when you come down to chaos magic and Lester Crowley, and again, she's a rep representation of the Horror of Babylon from the book of Revelation. Like, yeah. And so you're saying that this this started like way back then, right? The Aleister Crowley thing, because it was modeled from this, the, you're saying the Dr. Druid character became Dr. Strange later. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So they, they, it was kind of like they had a, a stock character for like Stanley wanted to make a wizard. And then, Got so it. he made him Dr. Droom and then Dr. Droom became Dr. Druid because he was, he was a British guy. So you think about like Stonehenge, the Druids and all that kind of stuff. So this character goes to the East to seek more knowledge, more witch, God. like basically to, to learn the more witchcraft. And then he comes back and he's this character. Well, that, so Dr. Strange's character, the, the big difference is he's not bald. <laughs> he doesn't look like Lester Crowley anymore. He's, he's, he looks a little bit more like Anton LaVey, except he's got hair. Yeah, you know? actually. Yeah, he really does. That's crazy. So yeah. was he always a good guy? Well, that's I think that's the thing. It's like certain characters like him, I guess they kind of operate on the on the edge of are they good guys? I think they like he is an interesting character, especially in the movies, because specifically he does things that the other superheroes do not like at times. And he in the newest movie, he uses like like the dark evil book because he has to. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times it's like he's taking chances with what he decides is right because he knows better. And it's like this character is very arrogant and it's like. To me, he's like, he's almost like, I call him Dr. Satan because it's like, that's kind of who he is, where he like, again, like th these people believe the ends justify the means. So if it works out well in the end, then it's fine. When again, like even it's funny, like when you look at certain characters, they were trying to do things that the bad guys, they, they wouldn't compromise certain standards to be like the bad guys because that's what separated the two of them. Like guys, guys like Dr. Strange do not really have never really shared those values. And so he again, so if you use black magic, obviously anybody who knows anything about magic, black magic typically involves blood. It involves sacrifice it involves all the, the terrible things. I mean, the the power of the white magic comes from the same place, but the black magic, they're not even hiding that they're willing to, to do bad things to uh, to get power. Mm. Yeah, I remember seeing that movie and um I think I told you on the phone when I watched all the Avengers movies, um, including Dr. Strange, I, I remember it was right after I got saved, which is so funny because as I mentioned at the beginning, I never cared about superhero anything. 
at all my whole life and then I get saved and then a month later I'm like randomly like uh maybe I should watch the like it's just the devil mm -hmm. the devil's like hey no wait come back let, let me entertain you this way now like you know but I remember mm -hmm. when I watched the Doctor Strange movies thinking to myself like this is like what I was doing like it's such a new age movie like all the stuff that he does and has um I'm pretty sure I remember something with crystals in that movie too but I could be wrong oh I'm sure I'm sure well I mean it was like to me it was like this was a very fantastical way of showing what they actually believe. You know, right. the stuff with the por go with the portals, with the with the evil book. Even think about Doctor Strange. <laughs> this is crazy, and I I should make another video about this. But it's like so. The very beginning of the movie, Doctor Strange goes to a wedding. He goes to a wedding reception or a wedding, and he turns he turns water into wine. He like he gets he's at sitting at the bar, turns water into wine. Later his like he had a character from a different dimension who is him dies he buries him well he later in the movie he gets resurrected I'm, it's, I'm sure it's like three days later based on the timing of the movie and it's like it's like it's literally showing you this yeah obviously a spirit of antichrist obviously yeah. either mocking jesus himself or just showing that that jesus is obviously not the only one who can do these kind of yeah. things yeah oh that's Cra crazy crazy cra crazy stuff it, oh, it was another thing was i made a point in the movie when they say this is not straight from Doctor Strange, the movie, but it comes from the comic books. Again, from the, the roots of these things. It's a multiverse. So each, I guess, iteration of Earth or this universe has a number. And so our number, well, the, not our number, but the number in the movie for like what the, the Marvel universe that you know is 616. And I remember like when I, I remember when I heard that, when I first watched that in the movie, I didn't really know. I just thought like, wait a minute. 666 would have been two on the nose, so they use 616. Well, literally in an early papyrus of the Bible, like one of the one of the earliest manuscripts they found, the book of Revelation actually uses the mark of the beast or the number of the beast as 616. And so I looked, so I looked this up and people were challenging me. Oh, well, that's old. That 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 version of the papyrus came out later than they named it. No, but I looked it up. So David Thorpe and Alan Moore were the two writers of that. And they straight up said it like you, there's a marvel.com interview where they say well we wanted to pick a number that was really scary and this was really close to six 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 so this is the one we used and so like so that like that's in the movie and why is that like i said why is this stuff in the comic books unless it's again and so like alan moore and david thorpe both practice chaos magic and and that was part of the writing method to come up with these these stories that's insane and so I kind of want to mention something about that here for a sec, because you've mentioned already, uh, like, I don't know, four different scenarios from four different um, characters slash storylines that all come from the Bible, right? You're talking about the horror of Babylon with Wanda. Mm -hmm. You were talking about um, the Nephilim with the X-Men. And then you just mentioned that, like with Doctor Strange. It it's like... And yet, <laughs> and yet the people that often are so into these kinds of movies, like they, they think Christianity is bogus, but that's what, that's the storyline that all these movies and these writers are stealing from, because that's what the devil does. He steals everything from God and then just perverting it into ultimately like, you know, the Antichrist agenda, which spoiler alert, everyone, that's kind of what we're saying is the overarching theme. Like there's a lot of like sub themes within these films and within these comics, but the overarching theme is that of Antichrist, right? Yeah. One, what 100%. And when, you, and, when, and when you see it, like it, it becomes undeniable. And, and to, before we even get into like, the fact that I mean, just just to set this up again. So we're as we're talking a lot about the com the actual comics, not the movies. So when Disney released their cinematic universe, I was telling Angela that they didn't own Spider Man, they didn't own the X Men, they didn't own the Fantastic Four. So they started off with the Avengers, and so they started off with Iron Man. So Iron Man was the first movie they they made. Which as a comic book fan, I thought that's kind of strange. I don't know if that's going to work as a movie. Because he was not like a tier one character like like Wolverine or mm. or Spider Man, so so he gets inter introduced and as like the comic books start to wane, but like the movies become elevated. Iron Man becomes a, a as big a character as Spider Man now. Like he's, 
I think even in the comic books, he's like life imitating art, art where he's become a bigger comic book character than maybe even Spider-Man himself mm -hmm. because he's such a big character. Well, the in the comic books, they literally, and I'm saying literally, you can look this up if you think I'm, if I'm making any of this up. They made Tony Stark, Iron Man, the Antichrist in the comic books. Like literally they have in the comic book series, his dad sells his son's soul, Tony Stark's soul, to the devil. And so like literally Tony Stark is the son of Mephisto. Obviously Mephisto comes from like Mep Mephistopheles, mm. who is literally like the Marvel devil. Like he <laughs> looks just like... If you if you imagine what you think like the devil is presented as most of the time with like red yeah. being all red with a pitchfork and all that's what Mephisto looks like. And so like, yeah, literally he is the Antichrist in these comic books. And then so then you start to see it on the screen like it's more subtle in the in the Marvel movies, but it's there like Tony Stark is presented as a good guy. But again, like so then you start to, so, to know something about the, the themes of the villains, like especially the main villain like Thanos. And they are like, he's got some similarities to the God of the Bible, believe it or not. Yeah. And then if I, I remember correctly too, with like the Iron Man theme, um, he's like the suave rich guy. So it's kind of just like, it fits right into the storyline of like what, what the, what the devil's son would have, like all the riches of the world. Mm -hmm. And like all the knowledge of the world, because he's supposed to be this like really smart, yep. sophisticated kind of guy. That's kind of insane. Wow. What uh, are there any other comics that you want to talk about before we kind of move into the movies? Um, I think that well, I think that's the uh, one of the big ones. I think that uh, it's interesting. We we talked off air about Venom. So right. in Venom, like yeah. so Ve so Venom in the comic books, he was he was a bad he was just a bad guy. I mean, I think maybe that's when I read the comic books, but of course, like. Obviously, they were they continued to write him after I stopped reading him. But originally, Venom was an evil character who hated Spider Man. Well, the the like the origin story of Venom was he was an alien symbiote. He was like this suit that Spider Man picked up on this this alien planet. He comes back and he realizes this thing gives him extra powers. Like he has powers, but he did, he's got even he's even stronger with the suit on. Well, he realizes this suit's corrupting him, and eventually he realizes he, he's trying to get it off and it won't come off him. And so, like, it's funny in the movies, even like the very first, I think Spider-Man three Venom is shown, and he and he is a he appears as a shadow in the room, mm -hmm. like okay, so you're getting like what's with what, what I'm picking, yeah, picking mm -hmm. up what I'm putting down here. Mm -hmm. So eventually, in the comic books, you know where Spider-Man goes to get rid of the suit? Church. Okay, I was he gonna, goes, I was gonna he, say it's he, got, he goes to church, homework. which is interesting, but obviously it's presented like the bell shake, like the the frequencies and like the vibration shake the suit off him. But I mean, like literally oh, yeah. Ven Venom is kind of presented as a demon and he had to go to church to get rid of it. You know, it's so, like that's, <laughs> that's, that's where he goes and gets rid of it. So, but in the movies, again, as like, as things were, these things were never presented as, as too good, but like in the, in today's culture where evil is presented as good or like the lines are, are blurred. Venom is now an anti-hero and yeah, like he's, like the movies feature him when he's a villain. He's, he was a villain in the comic books. He's he's not changed. It's like people's attitudes toward him have changed now. Hmm. Well, there's another one. Like I just said, like all these all these things that steal from the Bible. There's another one. There's like the demons. Okay, great. Demons mm -hmm. that need to be cast out. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. That's insane. How did how did Marvel? Uh, do you know how they how they got to be so popular? How it gets to the point where it's just this like the basically the epitome of pop culture. Like, how does it go from the comics to this like blockbuster phenomenon? Uh, well, I mean, I think for one, I got to give them credit for it. As like that, they they were well done. Like when they first started putting the Marvel movies out, they really took their time to build this this universe. But I think that to me, like again, so we are taught today that myths are just fiction myths are just completely made up stories but what i'm trying to say is if if Gen the very book very beginning of the bible talks about the heroes of old the men of renown and then you think about these old mythologies and again like so like if you think about like the angels in nephilim are presented as gods and gods and the god's sons 
who are demigods, like those stories, like, again, they, they so they obviously still have like the Percy Jackson movies, Clash of the Titans and all this kind of stuff where these these stories still resonate. Why? Why do they still resonate? Because it's like, because it does come from a place of like, I bet there are kind of people who can do these kind of like, there's like, there's something about this that for one, they, you know, like you think the world wants you to be like that. Mm. Everybody would want to be like Tony Stark. If you're worldly, why wouldn't you? He's a good looking guy. He's funny. You know, he's super smart. You know, he's got, he can buy anything he wants. And, and he made a suit that has special powers and he can kind of do whatever he wants. And he's good, you know, and he's a good guy. And so like, it's that idea that like, why wouldn't people want that? And so like you're looking up to these these certain beings again, like so way I, I bring up a lot. It's a very common one is like, if you think I'm reaching, what about Thor? Am I reaching when I say that Thor is like viewed as a god, the, the god of thunder? OK, so he literally is a from a Christian's perspective, which I believe is the true perspective. He's a false god, like a literal false god who still worship today in places, believe it or not. They still worship these old gods. He is the god of thunder. And if you think about all the lots of pagan religions, think about Zeus. Thor and Zeus are not different. They're just different type parts of the world. And so like, so Thor is presented as a good guy in the comic books. And in the very first Thor movie, Thor gets cast out of Asgard. He falls like lightning from Asgard. So you think he falls down like lightning because he was unworthy and he was very prideful and he didn't listen to his father. <laughs> like, you know, and then he goes and gets an earth, earth girlfriend. Mm. And it's like, so again, so he's the good guy. And we don't even know, like, like if you go watch that scene, I've, and I've, I've clipped that and I've, I've put it on my reels before. Like, it literally could be like God casting Satan out of heaven. I mean, it looks like, like it, you, that's what you imagine it would be like. But people think Satan looks like Mephesto. When he probably looked like Thor, he probably looks like he probably looked like a Chris Hemsworth where he's really good looking. He's got blonde hair, blue eyes. Everybody would think he's dreamy. He's the angel of light who gets cast out of heaven because he is too beautiful, too beautiful for his own good. He thinks he's too smart. He thinks he's too good. And he's not thankful for that. He's prideful about it. So he gets cast down and like he's obviously one of the big one of the again, he's he's one of the, the top tier characters in Marvel now. And does he does he ultimately end up like, if I remember correctly, going back and like overcoming that where he was cast from? Yeah, I mean, he like so. it's so they 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 show it as he is a you know eventually like yeah, he does get right with his dad in the in the comic books, but like it's it's just visions of like what they do. Right. And again, like so like so even even Thor's dad Odin, he's just like Thor. I mean, like they're the, they're kind of the same characters like in a lot of these pagan religions where. The dad and the son are the same, which honestly, again, as a Christian, I can say that's similar to how you would say God, the father and Jesus, the son are they're They're the same, but they're but they're two distinct beings. Mm -hmm. And so I, but I, obviously to this story, it's like these are it, part, partial truths, right? Yeah. Not like we're not we wouldn't say like this, the story of Thor is a true story, but it's. <laughs> It's told from a perspective that came from truth. And again, like as all these stories, instinctively, I said, I think when I started to understand like the Nephilim were, were real, the sons of God, like the Greek mythology stuff wasn't true per se, but it came from a place of truth. I think this is why these stories resonate where there is there. We, I think we know that there was a time before when stuff like this was actually more real than you can even imagine. Hmm. So the reason it becomes so big is because it actually is, it's biblical. It's just antithetical to mm -hmm. the truth. That's crazy because it's just, it's what, it's what Satan does. He capitalizes on, on giving you like, just like this, uh, so much of the truth that it's just enough to hook you into the rest of the lie. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's just his MO because he steals, he kills and he destroys. And yeah. If you're thinking in terms of Thor, like, well, if there's ultimately like a reconciliation between like him and his father and you're saying it's like, you know, Christ and God, I'm thinking in my head, given the entire context of the story up until that point, 
how everything is on par with him essentially being the devil. Well, then he gets reconciled with the father at the end. That is the Antichrist. Like it is literally like the Antichrist story. And then mm -hmm. with Thor, it's of course, that's like who every little boy wants to be. That's what every little boy is dressing up as on Halloween. That's yeah. what every girl, that he's like the character that every girl is like, oh, he's like the hottest one of them all. And it's like, I think you're right. Like that's exactly what the devil is. He's not like the scary guy with point, you know, pitchfork pointy tail yeah. and horns mm -hmm. he's like the handsome angel of light that is yeah right to and, deceive. and so i think that's where like people say like is this story does this story come from the bible it's like well i would say that this is the story you know so some people would say like that the bible copied other stories and you're like nobody's copying anybody else's story like this is a real story like there, like the bible story is the real story but they're all all the st other stories are similar because they because it happened, you know. Now, obviously, the perspective is different from when you read around the world. But again, like these stories are still go continuing on because this is really what happened one you know a long time ago. Even think about it's funny, like even like in Star Wars, it's like how isn't it interesting how the, the title crawl always said a long time ago in a galaxy far away, almost like. It's like, are they trying to almost present this like this actually ha this actually happened some time ago, some other place? Hmm. Isn't that weird? Like it's the, the way it's presented. It's like, why are they even trying to say like that? Almost, almost to the audience reading this, you'd say that, that really happened when with some place. Well, I think that's kind of almost like the idea with these stories, like that these mythologies came from a true place. How much of them are true? Well, obviously, you can tell like based on what the Bible says how much of them make sense again, like the sons of God, the sons of God are angels, the watchers from the book of Enoch took wives and they created demigods. The gods obviously were interacted amongst the people at some time. And then, so in this, it's almost like the Avengers would be like a modern version of that. And, mm. you know, like told from like today's, you know, from, uh, from what we would know today to make sense. Mm. Okay. So talk a little bit more about that though. Um, with like the Avengers characters specifically and maybe like getting into the niche of each different character and what they kind of represent. Well, I think the easiest one just to talk about is as we brought up like the spirit of Antichrist would, would be, Oh, maybe, maybe just to stick with Tony Stark and also the main villain from the Avengers. So the main villain is Thanos and we'll start with him. So Thanos is this character who's like the most powerful being in the universe. I think like that's they, he's he's called that, I think, in the Guardians of the Galaxy series. So his ultimate goal is to get enough power to snap his fingers and eliminate half of humanity. And so in Avengers uh, Infin or in the Infinity War Avengers movie, that's what happens at the end. He wins. He snaps his fingers and half of humanity disappears. And obviously it seems kind of most like a twisted version of like what a rapture might be. And and if you think I'm reaching, it's like so this guy comes down from you know, the outer space or a biblical perspective, the heavens. And the very first time he shows up on the screen in that movie, he says, you know, destiny arrives all the same. Or should I say it's here? Or should I say I am? You know, and he shows the glove. And it's like, so if you don't know what I am represents, it's that's what God calls himself when he talks to Moses in the burning bush. I'm the God of your father, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. You know, like that I am, I am, I am that I am. That means Yahweh. And so even in, so then you go later into the, the end game. Thanos again says, grabs the glove again. And he says, I am. And it's like this, there's this long pause, inevitable. Wow. But he, but he puts the emphasis on the fact that he's saying I am. And then, so, so then you look at a Tony Stark character. Again, as I mentioned in the comic books, literally the Antichrist, like like straight up the Antichrist. So when he when he defeats Thanos at the very last movie, he grabs the glove and he says, I am Iron Man. Does it just like it? So you're thinking like the iron and clay from the Daniel statue, the Nebuchadnezzar statue, the iron mixing with clay, which you could say iron represents could mention could uh, could certainly represent two different things. Spiritual be beings are represented with iron. Even think about Jesus comes back, he's got a rod of iron. 
like the Egyptians, when they first found iron, they, they said it came from heaven. So like iron and clay. So we are clay. We're made from earth. Adam was made from the dust of the earth. Hmm. So there's the, so in the Daniel statue, the, the feet are iron and clay, which doesn't quite mix, but you could, so you could view it as basically the combination of angelic beings and, and humans, or you could say transhumanism where there's this techno technological component where Iron Man fits that too, where like he's kind of, he's this spirit where he's defending against this threat from outer space or from heaven. And then he, he sacrifices himself in order to right. defeat the most powerful being in the universe. Spirit, you know, spirit of Antichrist. He's like, he literally saying, I am a God, but I'm a man. I am Iron Man. And he's the good guy. And he and he's the good guy. But of course, like in the movies, he is the good guy. Right. I think that's the thing is like people say like, oh, you, you're crazy. It's like, yeah, I get it. They, because they present Thanos as uncaring. This big, Thanos, ugly like, alien. Yeah. <laughs> and also and also Thanos, you know what he does? He sacrifices his favorite uh, daughter in order to get the soul stone. So it's like so again, so he and he didn't want to do it. But he was willing to do that in order to he had the will to do that in order to do what he was supposed to do. Wow. It's like like that. And they and they actually kind of do make you empathize a little bit with Thanos in the movie. Like he actually has like he's not a dumb character. He's actually kind of a smart character. But he went. He, it's funny. He, so he wins in the end. And then eventually, like in the second movie, they have to do all this weird tra time travel plot to 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 undo what he did. But. It almost is like this idea where like even in the movie, like I think Dr. Strange is saying he he viewed all these millions and billions of possibilities and there was only one scenario where they could win. And you're thinking about it like. Are they presenting this idea where when Jesus comes back? That's what it would be like. There's no scenario you can really win against Jesus and, and, the, and the devil knows that, you know, maybe he's given them that hope that there's there's you're telling me there's a chance. That's what I guess maybe that's what these people are counting on that that maybe that they can win at the end. And I think that ultimately, whether you know it or not, that idea of this threat from outer space, it's coming to destroy the Earth or, or kill half of humanity. Like you would view that as a threat if you love this world, obviously. Yeah. Again, like Jesus coming back to the people who love the world will, would obviously view Jesus as Thanos. And then you'd welcome any savior who was here to fight against that. And I think that that is what, without even realizing it, that could be like a, a possible end time deception where if let's just say Jesus is coming back and they know it, they know it's getting imminent. They could discuss it like, oh, it's an al there's an alien threat. Mm. Give us all you got, like whatever kind of rights you have. Don't worry. We're going to protect against you. This, this one guy right over here, this iron guy, he's, He's really good. He could he could save us all. And so without even realizing it, like they're setting the seeds where, yeah, I've 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 seen this in the movies. Like, is this predictive programming for like potentially what could really happen one day? Mm -hmm. Do you think that's the goal? Like as far as why they perpetuate the storyline like this? I, I think that I mean, I think obviously I think that it's yeah, I think that I think that's possibly one reason where like that they that and I believe that most of the alien stuff is deception. You know, like I think that it's all used to whether I don't believe aliens like they're shown in the movies are real. Mm -hmm. I think that I believe in spiritual entities. I I say in ancient angels that angels technically are aliens right. because they're not they're not from Earth. It does not mean they're like E.T., you know, so like things. And I don't believe there's outer space. I believe there's the heavens. So angels would come down from the heavens. From our perspective, it's the same thing. Or they would just show up. And one day we could be deceived in some kind of way. Because even if, if this if an angel said it was from another planet, like it would be very hard to argue with them if they look like Thor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if they showed up looking like Thor or Superman, like would you be able to say they got superpowers, they're way better than us? They could perceive as like a as a savior to people. Do you want to be like us? We can help you be gods like we are. Mm. 
All right. Well, you just said something that caught my attention. So this might have to be like another discussion for another day, but just like as a sidebar. It, do I need you to like red pill me on space or something? Is space not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I, it's funny because I just did a video about this and I know a lot of people are probably going to say this guy is obviously we knew he was crazy before, but I was just reading like, like biblically, I've got challenged on some of the stuff about like the biblical cosmology and I mean, biblically, like I said, if you, I, this is exactly what the video I made was I, I started reading Genesis again and I was saying, I left you two options when I did that. There's, there, there could be more than two, but I only left people two options. If you read Genesis one, I said, if you, if you believe this is a literal account of creation, you have to know this, this conflicts with what they've taught us. So I said, you kind of have to, you know, decide what you believe. Like, so do you believe that I said that if we're spinning around the sun, well, do you know that there was three days before God made the sun? So there was three nights and days because it obviously said when he created light, he said that was there was light, there was light and there was day and night the very first day. So then after that, there was three days and there was a sun. And then I said, and when God divided the waters, there was water above heaven. There was a permit put in place to separate it. And then there was water around the earth. And he told the he told the water below to gather and the earth was exposed. So I was just saying, so where's your outer mm. space in that scenario? Because mm. you really, there's nothing outside of here because the, because the moon, the sun and the stars were put in the firmament inside of where we're at in heaven, you know? So like the, the Bible would describe it as heaven. And then, so God, the only thing above the water is, is God's throne. Mm. So I was saying like, so are stars in the, the, the cosmic entities real? Yeah, obviously they're there. I mean, but is there a, is there a, a space that goes on forever. I mean, the Bible, biblically, no, it stops at the water and where God's throne is. So that's why I would say like, there's no, and like I said, as, as somebody who believes like what the Bible just says, the ancients would never say that these beings came from outer space. They would say they came from heaven. They came down to here. And I, and I say biblically, and even, you know, I would just say that that's what it says. Yeah. Well, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> that's a that's a but big that's, that's a big, a one, big yeah, yeah. can of worms we just opened. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. like with my my thing with all that kind of that conversation, it's not something I've studied extensively, and I like hearing both sides because, you know, I I'm no I'm no fool. I know they lie to us about everything, so I don't see why it would be any different. But it's also at the same time that I am like newer to the faith, you know, like two years in, where this particular issue is like maybe further down the list of priorities for me to really like get a good grasp on as I, you know, traverse deeper on my walk. But Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you know, for this way, like I didn't get to this, this place until recently and I, and it was, and, and all it is is, and I would just say this and whether you, I'm not saying per se that the earth is flat. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying what the Bible says. So like, I'm not, I, I say, so I don't defend all that other stuff. What I really just try to say is I got challenged on it a while ago. And when I, really started to read my Bible again, I decided the Bible's true and everything else I've right. been, I've been, I've been skeptical about. So mm -hmm. when people start challenging me, so what's the waters above? So what about when Joshua made the sun stop? Why did he, why didn't he just make the earth stop spinning? So like I stopped trying to fit a square peg in a round hole to say, well, I think the Bible could actually mean this because that's what we know to be true mm -hmm. in order. Instead, I say the Bible's true. Now I'm going to go from there yeah. instead of trying to like shoehorn the Bible into what I already know to be true. I'm trying to let the Bible lead me to to know what's what's false based on what the Bible says is true. Well, amen. That's what we all should be doing. Um, everything's an antichrist agenda, including NASA. And so let, let's get back to this conversation. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, oh, wow. Uh, I opened that up, so I I, mm. I totally take accountability for that. Where were we? So yeah, Iron Man and um, Thanos, him being the proverbial bad guy, but in reality would be very similar to the God of our Bible, who is the one true living God. And again, I think it's interesting they make him like this big, ugly, disgusting alien guy. Yeah. And then if I remember correctly, he has to like collect like stones, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, infinity like stones. Yeah, infinity mm -hmm. stones are just like crystals. I just remember that standing out to me. It was like a yeah. former New Ager. I'm like, oh, he needs crystals to get his power. Right, <laughs> right. Like I said, and so you have, so you have, you have your Antichrist character in Iron Man, and then you like literally have your 
version of Satan and Thor. Mm -hmm. And so you would say those were probably your two top mm -hmm. Avengers. And then you even have like, so like Captain America, he took a, he had to take a super soldier serum. So whatever that's concocted out of to become a hero, you know, and like, so, to, so Captain America, obviously you could say like, again, like whatever else they're putting in the medicine <laughs> these days, like you could be, you could become a God through science. Like, and you could be like Captain America, you know, like where he's a, he's also another good guy. There's another character of vision. So vision eventually had the mind stone. And at one point he was this form of AI that became sentient. And interestingly enough, in the comic books, Thor uses his lightning power to electric electrify this thing and cause him to live. He's got this mind. He had a mind stone and then he's a literally a robot and he becomes sentient. And it's one of the first things he says is, I think he says something of like, I'm not a good or bad. I just I. I'm just, I am. I remember so that. Like, I remember, I remember that. Like he said, I think I can't remember the exact phrasing of it, but he, that's what he's, that's what he leads with is that I am. Yeah. That's great. So again, like another, another spirit of antichrist, this, this basically this AI who's, you know, is better than us. Cause obviously he's more, again, she becomes more moral than most, most of the people. Mm -hmm. he, oh, he can, he can lift Thor's hammer. So he's worthy in that kind of way too. Oh yeah. That's right. And then I was curious about some of the other sub themes. Um, like we, we've already talked about some of them, but what is the deal with like the multiverse thing? Like, why do they push that so hard? Well, that's I mean, that's actually interesting because that's pushed actually in like the mainstream science now where like that's a pl plausible theory where like they again, they believe the universe goes on for infinity. So they're kind of like, well, why couldn't there be more places like this? It's almost like a justification of understanding the prob probabilities if you do believe in an infinite universe and you believe in the big bang and all that stuff well how did this place get so perfect for us to live here and, and and every other place we've ever tried to look around the universe for is uninhabitable it's almost like well the probabilities with with science and blah 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 if it goes on forever obviously there's this and then there's more there's more possibilities so that that's like literally a scientific theory that gets shoved into a fantastical movie but it's it's shown through this this like a different dimension kind of a thing even thinking about the dr strange movie they do that thing called what day walking where they're mm -hmm. literally channeling their consciousness into these beings down in this in, or into another multiverse that that interacts just like ours i mean like to me i was almost like is that a window you know and of course in order to do that they had to use that the evil book it almost it almost made me think of like these high, you know, like so Doctor Strange and the Scarlet Witch are both doing this. And it almost made me think of like, is that showing you a window into like the spiritual dimension of like possibly even think about when Judas betrays Jesus, it says Satan went into him like like almost like used like channeling his being into this man in order to, you know, do obviously a very wicked deed. Mm hmm. And then opening people up to that whole idea obviously would be make, you know, the point of us just having this one life, you know, one chance of salvation. None of that matters because, oh, there's infinite universes and all of these things. So, right. You're not you're not very you're actually not very special mm. because there's there's infinity of you in other places. Mm -hmm. I guess that I guess that's probably that's a obviously a constant theme with the people who believe that kind of, that sort of thing that like what you do doesn't really matter. There's there's you there's there's Angela's and JT's everywhere and you know they're probably doing fine. It's like your pet the, all the all the paths lead to the same place though. So don't really don't really worry about it. Yeah, all paths lead to the same place exactly. That is like that that is the central foundation of basically every other religion other than ours. That. Right, right, right. So yeah, so obviously, the, it gives these people and I think that to the whole theme of like this stuff it's like, it gives people a almost religion without any accountability is to think they can. Oh, well, that's cool. I believe in spiritual stuff, too. Like, that's great. You know, we're I'm sure we're all right. <laughs> yep. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the other characters. Um, I wanted to talk about the Hulk a bit. Because, when, like I said before we started recording, at first I was thinking, 
oh, is that a Nephilim thing? But then you said something else. So can you share that? Because I I think that's really good and worth noting. Well, I think like the Hulk is so he becomes the Hulk. He's like, you know, like one of the famous things I remember they used to have like the Lou Ferrigno 70s TV show. And he you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. And so like what the Hulk literally is, is just a rage monster. You know, so like the, the Hulk, when he gets mad, he becomes this this monster. And so like is if is that possibly showing like a demon manifest where like he becomes huge and you and he's and he's unruly and he breaks stuff. He's, he's very powerful and don't get in his way. And I think that it's kind of the most obvious thing. It's like he, he becomes a monster when he gets upset. And like and even in the so in the comic books, too, it's like even in the movies, the Hulk does not the, Bruce Banner does not want to be the Hulk. You know, because he can't control the Hulk. He doesn't mm. like he's he's always trying to get rid of the Hulk. And even like I, I can't remember which um, I think it was they've done like they've tried to in, introduce the Hulk and reintroduce him in the in the Marvel movies many times and it hasn't worked. But I remember one one scene distinctively, they were saying that like Bruce Banner saying he tried to to kill himself. He tried to shoot himself. Yeah. And and he and he woke up and the, and the Hulk was was biting the bullet. Like, so wow. the, the Hulk, the Hulk did not let him do that because the Hulk was keeping himself alive. Wow. And it's like, so it's like, obviously it's it, that level of, of rage and despair. And again, like as, as somebody was spiritualized, that's clearly demonic to have that kind of rage. You can't control despair. And like, you can't, you can't change. And it's like, as Christians, we know, you know, he, he needs, he needs demon erasers to come in there and rebuke that demon out of him. He, yeah, he needs to have need that either. thing cast out. <laughs> yeah, he Jesus definitely needs name. to cast it. Yeah, but, but then that's, he's, that's a powerful demon. He's a good guy. A good guy. I'm using air quotes too, right? The Hulk. Well, he, well, that's interesting. So again, in the comic books too, like, so the, the Hulk was probably, as we talked about now, like characters like Venom, he's more of an anti-hero because like mm. Bruce Banner is good. The Hulk is is on rule you know like he even in the movies they show him it's like he's very hard to contain even for the avengers he can be used for good but he's very destructive and it's like in the very first movie he's destroying everything to kill the bad guys it's like mm -hmm. that's so like he is yeah i mean i think it's very very likely just showing like that these demons can be useful but be careful but you wouldn't mm -hmm. like them when they're angry like mm -hmm. make sure you you try to contain them in certain kinds of way, but in, in the end, like he's not always being, he, they can't always contain him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm only asking because that's like a theme with um, just kind of like the occult in general is like to make friends with your demons sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I see that as the similar storyline with the Hulk. It's kind of just, you know. Well, it's like, it's, it's kind of like the theme of like just witchcraft in general where this is what witchcraft is, is using demons, trying to manipulate demons in order to accomplish tasks. That's what that's kind of what like what like they real magic is not just not just like influencing people, but like the, the what the what the sorcery would be would be able to control demons. And again, this this goes back to even like uh, an apocryphal book, like the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon has a sigil ring. And he's, he's able to control demons and gets them to do things for him. And so just think like that's what mm -hmm. like a Lester Crowley would have done would be they use signs and sigils. Again, so like if you think pentagram, think like think like the 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 was the, the different symbols on like Iron Man's chest is like a triangle. And then you have like Dr. Strange has his necklace that's like an eyeball, you know, like they're using these certain sigils. And D Dr. Strange, you see when he puts his hands up, there's all these sigils. You know, every every different geometric design shows up in his hands. And so what what Satanists would do is they would they would draw sigils on the floor and that would protect them from the demons. Because, again, they would they even understand, as like I mentioned before, Grant Morrison and Alan Moore, two of the most famous comic comic book writers in the world. They said the same thing. Be careful. Even they I think they even talked about these casting out spells or these kind of a. Uh, cleansing spells because when they are trying to use demons occasionally it goes bad mm. you know like and i think that's like, at the end of the day like that's what this is is them trying to be able to manipulate the spiritual forces in order to 
accumulate and accomplish tax on earth. Yeah. So interesting how you always have to like acknowledge it. Like you use it for your, for your gain, but you also acknowledge that it's evil. Like in new age, that's what we did. It was, it was like, you know, you gotta do shadow work because like, well, the, the whole idea of like making friends with your demons was like making friends with like the dark parts of yourself, not literal demons, because we actually did try and protect ourselves against negative spiritual entities and you always have to like do all this stuff in order to keep yourself protected from it so that you can just channel the good ones and kind of leave the bad ones mm -hmm. and it's so interesting it's like hmm what what's that about it's it it's just they they deny like the very truth of it and yet they acknowledge it at the same time like it's it's so frustrating right well they were they presented it in a way that like it's it's you know, it's it not from like the pulpit of some guy saying, stay away from that's bad. They're trying to say, well, they don't really want you to know the truth about it. The truth is you can use this. And if you're careful, you can get what you want. You're careful. And that's exactly what the devil would be saying would be like, yeah. did did God really say you shouldn't mm -hmm. do that? Yeah. Like maybe you could. Maybe he just doesn't want you to have the things that you want, mm -hmm. you know, like just slyly. And as we and we as we stick with that theme again, back to Venom. So Venom is clearly a story because the because if the suit, which I you see this in all the times in the movies, the black goo is either representative of some kind of AI, some kind of demonic entity. And it's all about like embracing it. So like that the the suit is literally called the symbiote. Mm. So Eddie Brock in the suit gains symbiosis. And not everybody can do that with this 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 certain entity. But when he does, he can, he become, has great power. He was successful in his in his business he's in. Like he's like a reporter. He's mm -hmm. the things he couldn't do, he's better at because he has embraced this this entity, which he knows is evil. Yeah. And I guess like so he he has to appease this demon at times who wants blood. Literally in the comic books, he want or in the movies, he wants to bite the heads off of people. But Eddie Brock is he's not Eddie Brock is not evil himself. So he has to like pacify this demon. By literally getting him live chickens in the second movie, they like he he's trying to appease this demon through some other kind of blood. Just think, think voodoo. Yeah. Hey, I need a live chicken for this right. one. You that's, know that like that's, that's you, they mentioned that in the movies. And and as I was saying before, we the connections even like to go from Marvel to DC, Batman. Batman's not one of those ones you, anybody would ever really think about being like demonic or evil or whatever. But Batman, if you know the origin story of him, he had to become Batman through trauma. So if you know, like the the demonic and the, the how you can open yourself up through fear and trauma, Batman gets his parents killed right in front of him when he's little Bruce Wayne. And then you can watch Batman begins. He literally has to embrace his fear. He has to become this symbol. He has to become this fear. And he has to make other people afraid by using the fear that consumed him at one point. He's like, he takes his fear and he projects it out at some point. And you're like, that's literally, that's literally demonic. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there, even think about it. God did not give you a spirit of fear. He gave you a power, you know, a spirit of power, love, and self-control. He didn't give you like, literally the spirit of fear is demonic. Mm -hmm. Like the, 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 the Holy spirit is, is love and self-control. Mm-hmm. Like that, it's the, it's the opposite. It's literally the opposite of that. And that's what's perpetuated. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you kind of transitioned there because I wanted to ask, um, again, back to the beginning, layman's terms, the difference between Marvel and DC. Is there one? <laughs> um, again, it's just, like I said, they're very old. I think DC might be slightly older, but I mean, like Marvel is is done a better job, especially through the movies. But mm -hmm. like DC for the long, they they got they've got probably the two most iconic characters of all time, like Batman and Superman. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. like Mar you know, Marvel's equivalent is I guess uh, Spider Man. Yeah, you know, so I think that those are the only ones kind of on that level of like name recognition. Everybody knew that. Like obviously, they were doing Batman and Superman movies for the, they were the first ones. Like, yeah. I think, was it 1978 or 1977, they did the first Superman movie with mm. Chris, with Christopher Reeve. Mm -hmm. And so, like, so it really is just, it's it's a different brand. And they had some crossovers, but not too much. And um, even though they're different, like, the, the kind of overarching, like, superhero theme is the same, right? Because you were talking right. about well, I mean, Superman again, on the phone. 
Well, we were saying like, so some of the biggest characters, like, so again, like you have Aquaman and Aquaman in the movies now. So Aquaman is a prince of Atlantis. So if you know, like the story of Atlantis, Atlantis comes from this, from Greek mythology or not from Greek mythology, but like maybe not even mythology. It was like, it was a story told by Plato that came from an older story from, came from Egypt where Poseidon, the, the God of the water, the God of the sea founded a city or a, or like a nation by by having having children with 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 a with a mortal woman and he had 10 he had five sets of twin sons and they created this nation of atlantis and eventually the divine spirit dwindled in this place after it became very powerful it became corrupt and then the the other gods decided this place needed to be judged by a flood if that's not the if 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 there if that came from a true place at all it sounds awful lot like genesis six and seven where there's this 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 gods these gods came down had nephilim everything got corrupted and then eventually it was just judged by a flood so in the in the comic books aquaman is a prince of atlantis you know so they view atlantis as like this underwater city but like like that's where that comes from and then like i said superman is a great example of this where like this is one of those ones where it's like the most hidden in plain sight superhero of all time, where Superman is an alien again. So like go back to Aleister Crowley. At one point, Aleister Crowley said, "Angel." We, now we call them angels and demons. One day we're going to call them something else. So mm-hmm. Superman comes from Krypton. So he's an alien. He crashes down to Earth. And then, but his, so his, he's called Clark Kent. Well, the interesting thing about Superman is his costume is actually Clark Kent. His real clothes are the Superman suit. Like that's that's what that's his real clothes. That's what who he really is. So he hides hi- his identity of who he actually is. So, but his real name is Cal L. And so, Superman was written by Jewish writers. And so, if you think about like the stories of like even like the Book of Enoch, or even think about like in the Bible, we know two angels' names: Michael and Gabriel. Both their names end in E L. And so El comes from the Hebrew word Elohim, which means God. So Superman's name. And so Cal in Hebrew is light. So Hmm. light God or God of light. He comes down. He gets his power from the sun. Again, all all these pagan religions all worship the Mm -hmm. sun. Mm -hmm. You know, like even like think about like Lucifer, like Lucifer, O day star, son of the dawn. Okay, so he comes down and then he wears this this suit. He's got an S on his chest. Well, in the comic books, later that wasn't an S. It like it's not an S just for super. It actually was a family crest, and the family crest of the L family in Krypton was a dragon. So Superman, God of Light, the Angel of Light, comes down, and now he's the savior of humanity. Mm. And it's like, again, yeah. like I mean, these stories are like. Oh, and it was it was really interesting, and I think it was the there is a movie Batman versus Superman. So Lex Luthor is the is the villain in the Batman in the in the Superman series. And at one point in the movie, he he points to this this um, painting, and it's showing like angels coming down and in like devils and demons coming up. And he's like, he's like that should be upside down. He's like because we know that devils don't come from the from down beneath me from below or beneath us. They come. To, they come from the sky, and so he. So he's obviously referencing Superman. Yeah, and it's just, just like I said. So, like we know that because we should know that too. Is that the devil did not come from from hell? He came from heaven. Mm-hmm. That's crazy, and they just like say these things. <laughs> like- I mean, yeah, it's like I think that's the thing. It's like that you, like some of us who have started to put these things together it's like it's like once you see it it's really not it's really not that subtle because it's like you don't really people don't think these movies are that deep because they're not that deep Mm. but but when you think about people who create art who write music who write you know paint things it's like okay so like you and i we believe we believe in the one true god we believe in jesus if we wrote something and you're as passionate about the stuff as we are. It would obviously what I believe would bleed over into what I wrote. Mm-hmm. You know, like they people don't. I mean, mm-hmm. like obviously as as Christians, 
Mm. That's how we should be. Like, you know, you don't stop being a Christian when you, like, if you go work at, you know, and wherever you work, doesn't matter what you do. Like, you're still a Christian. You still are who, you, who God wants you to be. But I think that's that's the difference is what a lot of people who are who got the blinders on, they think that everybody else is as compartmentalized as they are. Well, church is, <laughs> church Sundays is for God. That's when I go to church. But when I go to here, we don't talk about politics or religion in these places. And it's like, the world puts their their view on you all the time and they don't even realize it. Like the people who obviously, again, they use the Lester Crowley chaos magic to write these movies, you know, like that is, they are putting what they believe in there. Obviously they're glorifying their God. Is it a revelation of the method that they're, they're telling you these things? And I think it's, I think it likely comes down to like even a, a biblical story in, in the book of numbers, you have Balaam, you know, Balaam, gets the Israelites to curse themselves because he can't curse what God has blessed. So he tricks them into, you know, going to this base, this orgy to worship the Baal of Peor. So they got killed. So those Israelites got, got death, not because that just because they're fornicating, but because they were actually worshiping Baal, hmm. you know, so he tricked them. So again, it's like, I think that likely is a, an issue where it's like, God is allowing them to deceive people in a way, but they, he's also getting them to tell the truth at the same time. We're like, you knew they, they told you in the movie, but you weren't, but you could not see because you've got spiritual blinders on. Right. And that's really good. So that kind of segues perfectly into, you know, where we kind of start to close out here talking about, um, well, what you just said really is that they're going to write ultimately what they believe. Mm -hmm. And so what is the consequence of that for us to be then consuming it? Like, what does that say about us? Like we can say with our mouth that like you said, Oh wait, yeah, I go to church Sunday morning. I'm a Christian, but then like Sunday night, like what are you consuming at home on your couch? So mm -hmm. where is your belief really lie? Because you have to understand that these people um, they believe something completely antithetical to your God. They actually hate your God. Mm -hmm. They actually use him in order to capitalize. And, and, and the storyline comes back to like, we've been talking about from the beginning, the Gnosticism thing, which is of course, like scripture flipped on its head. Mm -hmm. And so talk about that where, um, the writers are kind of channeling i think you said something before we started recording they're channeling and like even the actors like you said um robert downey jr jr right he's he yeah so, the one. so so i yeah so i mentioned before i said alan alan moore wrote like actually he wrote v for vendetta and if you there's a comic book that, that came from a comic book i believe that was dc so really? v for vendetta yeah v for vendetta the movie wow came from a series and like literally v in that series is he's he's the devil I mean, like yeah. that's who he's, he's an agent of chaos. I mean, you think about it, it's like anarchy is like the V symbol, basically upside down. So that's, that's kind of who he is. And so Alan Moore, he, he's one of his interesting one. Like, obviously when you listen to these guys, they tell you what they believe, like they're not shy about it. Like Alan Moore actually mentions that, that what magic is, that a lot of people get twisted about what magic is. Cause they're looking for like, like David Copperfield or something like that. What he's trying to say is, what magic actually is, is me changing your consciousness. Like if I wrote you a song, he's saying like that art is the art. Like art is the arts. Like the craft is the craft. And he's basically saying like what magic really is, is being able to manipulate your consciousness in order to change your point of view. And so like that's exactly what they do all the time. And so what Alan Moore was saying, he gets this stuff directly from Alan, you know, from like a Lester Crowley. He's, he's involved in chaos magic. And I think one time he was saying like that, like a lot of these satanic books are literally named after what I think it was called. It was it the um, the grammar or it was one of these one of these old magic books. He's like, that's just a fancy way of saying grammar. So he's hmm. saying like, I'm going to use words in 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 paintings and and art to manipulate your consciousness. And so then he writes these messages in these these movies. He literally says he channeled the demon. He was saying he was like the worst month of his life, but eventually he embraced this demon. And then he's one of the most successful comic book writers of all time. Grant Morrison, a guy wrote for wrote Batman, wrote Spider. I think he wrote um, 
I want to say he, I think he wrote some of the Doctor Strange comics. I know he I know he wrote Superman. He was like one of the most successful comic books writers of all time. Chaos Magic, Lester Crowley. And again, so Lester Crowley is that if you guys don't know who he is and be lucky if you don't. But I mean, <laughs> he is one of the most wicked men alive or not alive or was was once was alive. alive. But yeah, yeah, but super dark. But this is what he's talking about. Like this is this this manipulating demons in order to get what you want. Mm -hmm. And so I so I said this to you before we came on. And to know like this is a thread that this it's a, it's like a it's like a thread that's weaved through the tapestry of our entertainment culture like you couldn't believe. I mentioned on the last live we were talking about uh they sold their soul for rock and rolls. So it's it's a it's a documentary by the Good Fight Ministries. All the musicians basically rep Lester Crowley. Yeah. And so but then I realized it's it's not just it's not just the musicians. So this is I sent you this this article. It's from Entertainment. I think this is from two thousand eight. I believe it was. Um, it, it's an older article, but this is what Robert Downey Jr. Because if you guys don't know, obviously he hasn't always been Iron Man. He he had a he was a pretty successful Hollywood actor. He had problems with drugs, got, went to jail, and all this kind of stuff. So there was a time when he was coming back, and so obviously if looking in retrospect, the role of Iron Man obviously solidified him as a megastar. And so he knew that was going to happen. And he said, I said, I'm reading this article from Inter Entertainment Weekly. This is what he said. He said, um, he says, um, he said, uh, Downey wanted Iron Man so badly, he spent three weeks compulsively rehearsing every conceivable line reading for his audition. He said, I had amendments, ancillaries, pop-ups for every part of the scene. If it went off in one direction, I could I could add A, B, or C. It was madness. He says, but it was also the most positively reinforced ritual I have ever performed. If a Lester Crowley had a younger brother, it was that type of S. Mm -hmm. So like, so he is like, and if you go further into like things that 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 he said, he literally talks about using a Lester Crowley's method in order to act out the role of Iron Man, which again is the spirit of Antichrist. Lester Crowley writes about the age of Antichrist, the age of Aquarius and all this kind of stuff. It's like, that is what he's talking about. And it's like, how could we be you know, like, if, if, if you ever sitting at home and at one point you thought we're reaching, it's like, well, how does this continue to come up? Like, how are these things so connected where it's like the writers of the comic books, the actors, the musician, even go back to uh blacks, like again, so, Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne has a song, Mr. Crowley. Right. Iron Man, I am Iron Man, the, the song. Go look up the lyrics. Super weird. Super weird how it's connected. So that's what he was even saying that Iron Man is this, this billionaire who's obsessed with Black Sabbath. And it all it all works perfectly yeah. together where these people are all, all obsessed with Lester Crowley. Yeah. They're all obsessed with with magic, chaos magic. And obviously they have got what they wanted out of this mm -hmm. this whole thing because you think about like as as satan offers jesus all the things of this world if you bow down and worship me it's like jesus didn't say you can't do that because they're not yours to give he told him no because he did actually have those things to give and again like so when these people say they use these methods and they're the people you know yeah. they're the people who write the write the write the content you watch they are the ones who act they're the ones who sing the songs, write the songs. Tell me they're wrong. I mean, do you believe do you believe them? Yeah. And then you consume it. Yeah. And so what does that what does that do? Again, like so if Alan Moore is telling you that the magic is just getting you to change your consciousness, do you we we all know that the art, TV, music, even paintings, they get you to feel a certain way. Yeah, it's working. It's it, it means it, it means it's working. Yeah, it's like I said at the beginning, it's not just idolatry. It's like actual enchantment. And this mm -hmm. was, um, you know, stuff when I first came to Christ, like at first, I'm like, oh, Christian liberty and all these things like, but the but the more you the more you like go down this kind of thing, and you understand like Satan really is the prince of the world. And he has given these people the dominion that they have for doing his work. It you can't you know jesus says the road is narrow for a reason like you can't have like one foot in and then one foot out 
it's like you want Jesus or you want what the world is offering you. And then, you know, th there's that spirit that's behind all of this. It is the Antichrist spirit, the spirit that's like that we're talking about being per perpetu perpetu perpetuated but throughout the movies <laughs> is also perpetuated in the music in the culture by and large, in the entertainment industry by and large, even like in some areas of science like we were talking about, right? It's all mm -hmm. antichrist and there's a spirit behind that. And so if, if that spirit is working through these people and you are putting that on your television, by the way, television, you're putting that on your television, you're consuming it, you are also coming into agreement with that spirit, which is not the Holy Spirit. It's an unholy spirit. And so, yeah, you, um, you're going to put yourself in some demonic bondage because of that. Like I fully, I've, I've, I've seen that happen. You know, Jesus tells us to keep our eyes single, to keep our eye on him. And that's for a reason, because he says like, if you know what you, the eye is like kind of like the window to the soul, which is not like from yeah. the Bible specifically, but he says, keep your eyes single because if your eye is full of light, then your body will be full of light. So if you are consuming anything of the darkness, then what's your body going to be full of? Right. So, I was, I take, I take that as well to like, when he's saying that, that what he's saying is like, if you can't see, you will be filled with darkness. And I think that's like, that's one of, I think that's what we we're saying. It was like, that when Jesus heals the guy, he gives the, the blind man who I was born blind eyes to see. If you can't tell the difference between darkness and light, how much darkness is going to be in you? Mm -hmm. And I think that I think that's ultimately what he's saying is like the, the eyes are the lamp. So the eyes are supposed to be able to give you ability to see. Mm -hmm. But if your eyes, if your lamp's not working too good, if you don't have light, you cannot see what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And I, I was thinking about, too, when you're saying like that, like, People do get discouraged when we start talking about these things because we're trying to tell you all the things you can't do. I'm not to, I'm, I'm not one of those people to do that because obviously I watch the movies to tell you what's in them. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'll say like, obviously it's a it's a heart condition. But what I did learn, obviously what it says in John is that if you love the things of the world. And again, these are the things of the world. If you love them, then the love of the father is not in you. Like mm -hmm. that's like, I mean, that's as bad as blatant as like, do not love the world or the things of the world or the love of the father is not in you. So like, that's ultimately, I think that's what you're trying to get at. It's like that, this is not innocent. I mean, I said, obviously watch it for what it is. I think I said, I, I go about it as like, a, I feel like I'm like a health inspector. Right. Sometimes I know yeah. there's going to be going to be rats in the kitchen <laughs> and I'm going in there to find them to, to, to confirm that there's rats in there. But I'm not sitting down at the table waiting to eat at the kitchen I know has got rats in it. Mm. Like that's I think that's the difference is do not be dining on that stuff. Don't pretend like this is innocent when it does not come from an innocent place. You mm -hmm. could say like, you know, I think that's where I think that's where most people really fall into, like that they think that that things are so agnostic in the middle in this world all the time, this gray area. And I think, as I said in the last episode, the devil owns the gray area. Yeah. You know, so like so so there's there is no middle ground between darkness and light. Right. One hundred percent. Yeah, I, I I hear what you're saying, and that's true. Um it's not yeah, it's not about like what you can and can't do. It's just scripture says what it says, like at the end of the day. And you're right, like if you do love these things, it's it's it 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 just goes to show where your heart's at. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, some people some people just want to reject what we say, like because because they obviously do love them. I mean, I think that's I think that's why they it's some people obviously get upset when you're like, why are you always just talking about evil things? Well, I'm saying like, it's like what you're really trying to say is stop saying the things I love are evil, right? And I think that that's where that and see it's that kind of heart because I think that obviously I'm here to say we're here to talk about what's true. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to let you decide after that. Mm -hmm. So like, obviously, like it's 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 going to be if you have any conviction about the things we're talking about. And again, like some of these things are like God says, don't do things in the Bible, like obviously divination and different types of things like that. He doesn't say don't do them because they don't work. Yeah, exactly. He, he really doesn't actually give you any good, you know, any specific reasons. But it's like if you kind of know like where this comes from, it's like it's because it does work. Right. And it, because it is because because this because the music is good, the mu movies are good. That's why they're dangerous. Yep. Not, not because they're not. Yep. Amen. 
And you have to remember too, also your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. And you know, that saying you are what you eat. I think that goes spiritually too. Like you wouldn't go in the trash can and like, like, oh, I want dinner. Let me go in my trash and like eat that. It's right. like, it's like, I'll eat, I'll, same... eat around, I'll eat, I'll eat around the stuff this bad. <laughs> yeah. It's like the same thing. Like, what are you, what are you willingly consuming? Like out of, out of a place where you're trying to feed yourself. It's like spiritually, mm -hmm. like, are you, are you, are these the kinds of movies you're watching? Are these the kinds of games that you're playing? And then you wonder at the end of the day, like why, why you don't feel close to the Lord or like right. why you're struggling with this sin or why you're struggling with that sin. It's like, because you're filling yourself spiritually with trash, <laughs> with like actual garbage. So that's just something else to consider too. No, that's a, that's a great point. As it was interesting, I was just doing a live stream with a friend and we were talking about forgetting certain things. And it's like, probably I'm sure as you, like when you woke up and you start to, you're, you probably had a, a desire to learn more. Oh, wow. That's great. You know, cause like, it, cause I think we do, we all do want knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously we know we're not saved by knowledge. We're saved by the grace of God and mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. But but it is good to know things. We're supposed to supplement our faith with knowledge. And it's like, as our knowledge increases on so many different topics, sometimes things fall out. Like, you know what I mean? It's like your your brain, obviously, in our, our short-term memories and our long-term memories, they're like, they can only contain so much information. And so like, it does feel like, so if you're filling it yourself, obviously, if you're staying in the word, you're reading what, what God's revealing to you. And obviously you're doing some of the stuff we're doing. You don't have a lot of space, headspace for stuff like that. Right. You know, you shouldn't be like dwelling on like a thing, like meditating on these these movies that obviously have clearly evil themes to them, mm -hmm. whether you noticed it or not before. But like if you don't think that influences you, I'd say it's probably because it has influenced you. Yeah. Like, you right. know what I mean? Because like because right. if you don't think that it does, like you have to know that these people are not like the, the devil is not stupid. Mm -hmm. The devil is very evil. Mm -hmm. And again, like the Bible tells you all the time not to be deceived. And I think that that's the, that's the main point. It's like that, like it's it's you're more you're less likely to be deceived if you know what's true. And, you know, again, like the, the voice of the good shepherd and, you know, the, the, the counterfeit. Yep. Amen. Well, this was a fun conversation yet again. I really enjoyed it. Is there any um, are there any like closing thoughts that you have? Anything that we didn't talk about that you wanted to mention? I know. I think overall, that's it. I was like, I, I, well, obviously as I want to plug the, plug the movie we made again. Oh yes, like, please think, do that. <laughs> no, but I mean, I think that that's like, this is funny because like Brian, like when we like demon racers, when we made ancient angels. This was like, I really kind of knew a lot of this stuff. And I think that was like, as God re started to reveal things to me, like I already knew a lot of these things. And I started to remember like, Oh, wait a minute. Is that where that comes from? Like, mm. Like I started to put the pieces together before I even, and so when I started watching the movies, I would say that if, if you doubt anything we say, go watch the, go watch the movies again. Like what you can watch your, the Avengers series again and start watching it with that mindset of like, this is what they're trying to show you. Mm -hmm. Like watch like the age of Ultron and all these, these movies, they're, they're putting the pieces together to like this, this kind of almost these, the, the rebels, the rebellious spirit again, like, so the ultimate rebel is, you know, the devil so this you know thor and all that kind of stuff my main point is to say like to so in ancient angels like you understand like why these stories do resonate and why it's still here and why these these things that happened so long ago are are, are even relevant today and it's like because i think it is it really is about that they're trying they want you to crave the things that the earth had before the flood i mean like literally it's kind of wow. insane to think about that like they tried to glorify that time you know, like, like the Greeks would call that the golden age. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible doesn't call it the, the golden age. It calls it the days of Noah. And so Jesus talked about when he returned, it was going to be like the days of Noah. So they want Very you to crave the days, the days of Noah, the gold, the golden age. It's not golden from God's perspective, <laughs> but for that, the golden age will be when, when, when the millennial reign happens and, and there's a new uh, right. Israel and, you know, new Jerusalem and heaven and earth. But like, it, it is kind of crazy to think about it, but like, that's why I'm trying to say is like that your adversary is not stupid. Mm -hmm. Take, take him seriously, but mm -hmm. obviously, but be of good cheer because, because Jesus wins in the end. And obviously if you want, if you want to look up to anyone, don't look up to Thor, 
look up to looked up to the God who created everything and and the God who's yeah. the God who sent his son to save you. Please don't dress your little boy up as Thor for Halloween. In fact, please don't dress up on Halloween at all, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And if you got and if you got Thor dolls in your house, just know who that represents. Like yeah. I said, I, I was I was joking with you before we and I was like, I said, I know it's I, I don't even know how many of them, but I know that you got pastors in churches someplace where they got little Avengers dolls on their on their desk somewhere. Or like the youth like, pastor with like the Captain America shirt, right? <laughs> right. I'm I'm hip, I'm hip. I'm hip. I like that yeah. demonic thing too. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, um, so people can find you. Your handle is JT follows JC across the board, right? YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. If you if you look at that up, and obviously I've got a podcast, Decoding Babylon. And if you okay. want to check out Ancient Angels, go to ancientangelsmovie.com. And um, yeah, I think that. Again, we we tie a lot of these things together. And I think once you kind of had that understanding about angels, Nephilim, demons, mm -hmm. it's like things start to actually make a lot of sense into why we've been so blind to these things. And, yeah. and, and obviously how it's like it's becoming more and more prominent. So I think it's obviously becomes more timely. And again, with like the alien phenomenon in the comic books, it's it's it it's just kind of like exactly the times we're in. Yeah, I'm going to have to bring you and Brian on together sometime. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. Talk more <laughs> about that. Well, thank you so much for your time. This was awesome yet again. And I know people are going to be blessed by it. Well, thank you. Obviously, uh, I appreciate any opportunity to talk to you. And uh, yeah, this is awesome. All right. Well, um, oh, close out in prayer for the audience and then we will say bye. Okay. All right. Heavenly Father, we just we just come before you today and we just pray, Lord, that um that you used us as the way you wanted us to, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that that we know, Lord, it's it's you that plant that we're just trying to plant seeds from you, Lord. And we just pray that um that anything that we said today, Lord, that obviously it gave you the glory, Lord, and that and points people towards you, Lord. We're not just here to talk about the evil, but Lord, we're trying to point you to point people toward to the light, Lord. We just pray that um, Lord, that you that the people are edified by this and we just pray like that you're glorified we pray all these things in the name of jesus amen amen all right jt thank you so much well thank you so much appreciate it all right we'll talk soon all right see ya bye all right everybody well Yet again, another awesome conversation with my friend Joe Telford, otherwise known as JT. Again, you can find him, JT Follows JC, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, his Ancient Angels movie that he did with my good friend Brian of Demon Erasers, definitely recommend that as well. I will drop all those links down in the show notes below. I pray that this conversation was, like we said, edifying for you, convicting for you, and just overall something that you can learn from and then take up and out with you as you intend to follow Christ. Well, I hope that y'all enjoyed that episode. If you were blessed by it, please do consider partnering with the Heaven and Healing Ministry. There's a QR code up on the screen for your convenience that you can scan to become a monthly partner with us. Or if you just want to sow a one-time seed, there are different options to do so down below in the episode description. Thank you so much for your support. Heaven and Healing is entirely crowdfunded, so it all means so much and it really helps. Thank you all so much. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to Heaven and Healing podcast if you haven't already. God bless y'all.